we were doing our thing at our generation, and obviously the crime artists are of a different generation, so they're, they're sort of doing their thing. But, it, it, but it's all connected. It's all, it all correlates. Yeah. You know, whether it's the it's 80s or the 90s. Man. It's yeah. all connected. It's all connected. You know, you know, w- would grime have come about if we didn't do our thing? You know, w- would, would, uh, would, would rave music and drum and bass be where it's at if, if we didn't do our thing? Because everything, there's six degrees of separation with mm. everything. And I'm not saying that we are responsible for the progression and, and how uh, 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 music is like now, mm. how it's mm. evolved. But we played a part. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official dot com. Street culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer podcast. All right, let's have it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, central as you need to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. <laughs> Big shout out to all the followers, sharers and carers, people that have been in from the jump, sporting and uh, showing mad love. Uh, we're just getting started, a lot of things going on in the back end. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hodder Wars Summer 2024. Wow. So we've had many uh, people come on the podcast to talk about the history, the real history of hip hop in the UK and it's descending from the West, Western world. Um, we've had grime, we've had drum and bass, but none of it amounts to anything without a gentleman like this inside the place. Uh, from the inceptions of hip hop, late 80s, if you ain't heard a hard noise, then you've been... <laughs> We were about to get schooled right now, because if it wasn't for this gentleman here and his uh, uh, merry men um, of the late 80s, then you certainly wouldn't have the aforementioned genres. He's a, a maestro of many talents and a figurehead of the uh, of the crew hard noise. AJ inside the blaze. Do, do, do. More, more, more of that, more of that, more of that. How are you doing? I'm, I'm so good. happy to be here, brother. Thank you so much for joining. Bro, I mean, it was a minute, but we got there, and the most... Exciting part of it is that you're busy. You're doing stuff. Got to be busy, brother. Yeah. Got to can't be idle, man. <laughs> Got to be busy. Got to be busy. No time for idleness. No time for idleness. No time for the long thing. Mm. You've Got to be busy. Got to be active, dude. Because we're living in a fast-paced world, brother. Yeah, it look, really is. look how fast the internet's going. Because. Swipe here, swipe there. Click here, click there. Everything's fast-paced. Yeah. You know what I mean? What perpetuates that? Do you think? I don't know. I think it's maybe algorithms. Maybe it's there's so much going on because with the internet, everybody, each individual can upload what they're doing. Mm. And when you're being exposed to so much content mm. at a rapid, rapid pace, it you know, like back in the day with TV, they broadcast certain things. You've got to yeah. wait for the time to, when it's going to be on TV. Yeah. You're sitting there, you've eaten your dinner, or you might be eating your dinner while it's while you're waiting for it to be broadcast. Now, Forget everything's it. just at you. Everything's at so you. So the mindset will change because of that. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So that's that, exactly that's what I think anyway. How do we keep up with this activity? I mean, you are proficient at it, I might <laughs> just say as well. Graphic designing, uh, editing. I mean, you're... Your in your socials really do you know challenge the norm in itself, bro. I do my bit, man. You know, I mean, I enjoy the social media aspect, and it gives me a chance to plug my skills, my talents, and in addition to that, my knowledge. Mm. And my knowledge is very broad. You know, we're not just talking about hip hop history. You know, I'm first generation hip hop history in the UK. Yeah, first generation hip hopper. Huh? Um, but my 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 um, my my knowledge is outside of that as well. Mm. Grew up with reggae, you know. When I was young, my mum and dad were playing the ska, the rock steady music. So I grew up with that. Mm. The history, you know. My, my subject matters. I'm very very uh, broad minded. Yeah. of reading a lot over the years, mm. and pretty much trying to rewrite certain aspects of history with the knowledge that I've got spread into the young old. The youth, you know what I mean? So, mm. like you say, my social media pages are, are very, um, they're very broad. Mm. 
but my mind's always racing. <laughs> so I could I could put up some comedy thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, could, I could put up an advert that I liked back in 985 that's resonated in my head. I'm going to put it up. Yeah, yeah. The milk tray advert with the guy <laughs> diving into the water, delivering the woman the milk, the chocolates and all that. <laughs> my, my mind's crazy like that. Yeah. And I could put up a scene from Grange Hill that I remembered from, from the 80s. I'd put that up. Mm. You know what I mean? So, you mentioned rewriting history there. That's mm. interesting you, you kind of pulled that out there. Like yeah. from, for a generation of people that are coming in off the back of perhaps what might be perceived as... So the fault lines of Instagram, mm. they kind of start when the first people get on the social media platforms mm -hmm. and all the history before then. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, it doesn't count. It was all controlled. It was all pretty much whitewashed. Remember, history was taught by the winners, not the losers. Mm. Colonizers, mm. they will tell you their version of history, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let the losers speak. Let the losers' generation speak. Yeah. Listen to their stories. Yeah. Rather than what's published in a book from eighties or nineties or, yeah. or or before that, because not everything that's published in a book is is fact factual. No, it's not. History, his story. Break it down. History. Mm. His story. <laughs> oh, what about her oh. story? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or, or their story. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? 100%. So, you know, when I was growing up at college, and obviously at the time when hip hop was booming in the 80s and Public Enemy came over with their their messages. Impact. Dude, that got me to read books, man. Like, read books on certain areas mm. of history that we weren't taught or we were lied to. You yeah, get, you get what I'm saying. Of course, I get what you're saying. And when when the truth unfolds, man, it's like it that 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 can create anxiety for people mm. because they're so used to what they were taught. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. And this is a broad subject, not just one area. This is a, a broad subject of, of of history and life. Knowledge itself. It's very important, and it's very important to share the knowledge mm. in a diplomatic way. Yeah, so everybody can learn. But people, not, don't, not people, don't have, way, people don't have patience, do they? They don't have patience to learn. Books, books in general. You, you very rarely see people reading books on public transport. Everyone's on their phones. Yeah, catching up with what XYZ said over <laughs> yeah, the fence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. That's how fast-paced the world is now. Yeah. You know, I mean, commuting here from South London... Mm. Was an interesting journey. <laughs> although, I, although I left my book at home because I normally bring my books and stuff like that. I'm, if I'm commuting quite far, do you know what I mean? Because you get on the tube, there's no reception and all the rest of it. But I actually forgot my book. I've got several books I'm reading at really? the same time. But commuting here was uh, it was interesting, sort of looking at the, the different types of people on their journeys, where, wherever they were going. Yeah. Yeah, everything was pleasant, lovely, colourful, and all the rest of it. But the gone are the days where people are actually reading a book. Yeah. Everyone's like yeah. playing music. And the thing is, they're playing music loud. Yeah. Like, there are headphones. Headphones were invented for that shit. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's your podcast, <laughs> brother. <laughs> you you, you know can have a Pink Floyd Pyrotechnics if you want. This is good. <laughs> fucking AJ. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's everything's, pardon me, everything's different, man. And, you know, I've been around, I've been around for years, man. Mm. And so I've seen changes, as I'm sure you have. Mm. You're ten years younger than me, and you know it's the culture, the, the, the vibes, the energies. Mm. You know the dynamics of life. Mm. You you lose people. Mm. You know you, you grow up with people. You lose family. You lose friends. Everything changes, dude. Yeah, it does. And Everything you'll be changes. you'll be forgiven to forget your books because you are the subject of uh, today's uh, uh, lessons here. Well, as Bruce Lee said. Everything in life is temporary. Ooh. So, and that's a powerful quote. Yeah, it is powerful quote. Do you think? Do you think a lot of um? Sorry to cut you, but mm. just st sticking with that. Mm. Do you reckon understanding and appreciating mortality within this era of of where of how we're living? Do you think that plays a big part in it? Because I think people are living so much in the now, and you know, money driven, and you know, three hundred pound an hour for you know. When you start going down that road of of uh, intellectual thought, that can mm. you lose. You, you lose the greater understanding of what you're here for. Do you know what? There's a lot that's controlled that we can't see, hmm. right? You know, whether you watch TV, even subliminal adverts and stuff like that, a lot hmm. of it's controlled what we see. Hmm. You watch the news, 
Everything's controlled. Yeah, it is. They will broadcast what they want you to know. My algorithms are going up and down like yeah, a yo-yo yeah, yeah, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're getting spasms in a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this this sounds really deep and all the rest, but it's true. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not conspiracy theorist and not, nothing like that. I just I just take it like it is from my angle, from my point. It's of view. facts. Do you know what I'm saying? You yeah. know, it, it, it's just you know I, I don't watch TV much. I very rarely watch TV. No. Yeah, you know what I mean? If you if you watch soaps, everything's negative. Yeah. In soaps, there was Always. a drama going on, incest affairs. Fights and all that, all that, all that, all that negativity. And you have a good time at Christmas, all the jovial, fun times of Christmas, and then you go and turn on EastEnders. Yeah, and <laughs> and, 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 and you know it's a big story. Like some, someone's going to die, or an, an affair's going to be exposed, and it's just negative. But that, that's what, for them. That's what draws in the figure uh, the, of the viewers. No, Let's write a negative storyline, a blockbuster storyline. Why does everything got to be negative, man? Yeah, yeah. Why does everything got to be negative? Totally. Yeah, people are dying. People are like losing love on people. Are, Getting illnesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Dude, I lost a close friend. Uh, I went to his funeral about a month ago. I've grew up with this guy since the seventies, mate. Wow. You, you know, you know. Yeah. And and he he passed away recently. I'm not going to put that online because it's private. Yeah, of course. You see what I mean? But I think the way the world is, a lot of people put everything up online, man. It's scary, isn't it? Yeah, man. Like, where, where, who, who, where did that mindset come from? Yeah. You see what I'm well, saying? Why? It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> You've um, you've certainly lived a life, and with your your entry with hard noise. I mean, there was obviously we will go into this now. In fact, the, you know, where did it all begin for you, my brother? Like the music bug, oh. the, 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 the the political edge, the 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 drive and ambition. Where did it? Where did that? Where did it all come from? Do you know what? It probably came from when I was in my mother's womb because she used to listen to music when she was dating my father. You know, she he, he was into... My mum's my from Barbados, mm-hmm. God rest her soul. My dad, God rest his soul, he's from Jamaica. So he brought that Jamaican culture over, you know, Windrush generation. Mm-hmm. So when I was growing up, my dad used to have parties, those blues parties, man. Those oh. Jamaican blues parties, the curry goat, the dominoes, the music, mm. and everybody... Went to my dad's parties, my, you know yeah. everybody. There was, and I think I think he might have even charged an entry fee. You know, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't surprise yeah. my dad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but he used to sell liquor and all that. You know I've been I mean? I've been privy to a yeah. number of them part. I know exactly. Do those parties exist anymore? Old tight Tottenham. You know what time it is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So basically, it came from that. You know, the music my dad was playing. He had a big speaker set up and everything. You know what I mean? At the at the turntable, but the speakers were. Huge, and they make them himself, yeah, because that was part of the culture. Well, the whole the cabinets makeup. and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your speakers on top of speakers. Mm. You had the tweeters, the the bass box, everything. You know, so when you're young and you're seeing these gigantic speakers, yeah. and the sound coming out of it, game over, man. It was better than what I was seeing on TV. You know, listening to all that pop stuff. No disrespect to the pop music, but but back then when I was growing up, I had I had the privilege of. Both cultures mm. exposed. So obviously, I brought up in England, b- b- uh, born here, raised here. So the British culture was embedded in me growing up. But then I had the West Indian culture at home. Yeah. So both cultures helped me develop my ear for sounds, music, tastes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I, I'd say, you know, lo- loving that part of the West Indian culture in England as a child. Mm. You know, it was great because even my white friends at the time mm. spent a lot of time at my, my, my house than their <laughs> than their own homes because of the culture. Got brothers because and sisters. Brothers and different. sisters. You got brothers and sisters. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah. Got um, got a younger sister, Jackie. Big up, sis. Do you know what I'm Jackie. saying? I see. Um, see. I got two brothers, Paul and Peter. Big up, big Juice. Up, big up, big, big up, 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 the doctor, Come which is my on. brother Peter. Juice is Paul. They got me into hip hop. Wow. They got me into hip-hop, man. Do you know what I mean? What was um, that What was that first impact oh, like? Oh, mate, that was just, <laughs> that was just dynamic, dude. We're talking, we're talking 1980 when it came over here, pretty much. It, it, it was filtering through, but more sort of Buffalo Girls mm. and pre that Rapper's Delight. You know, my brother... Get on the seven. Google, get on the Google if you don't know yeah, him. Man. Right. Rapper's Delight, Malcolm McClellan, produced by Trevor Horn. Come on. Come on now. Rappers like you know the history of that you know what I mean Silver Robinson and all that Sugar Hill Gang, 
all that came about, you know, my, my, my elder brother, Paul, and Pete were, were buying the records. Mm. I'm the, the younger brother, interested in what they're bringing. Don't but, touch the record yeah, player. Well, yeah, <laughs> come on now, you know what I mean? And my brother, Pete, used to robot dance at school, you know, you know, in front of the, the assemblies and all that, you know, they'd, they'd get the, the dancers. Yeah, yeah. Who can do this? Who can do robot dancing and all that? So it was, it was, it was new, it was exciting. When the culture came here, mm. it was. I remember it was on News at Ten, mate. When, yeah. when break dancing was uh, uh, exposed over here, this is what these kids are doing in New York, man. It was on News at Ten, dude. Trevor McDonald's. It's like an unseen sandstorm. Yeah, man. So it came over. It was great to be part of that. Mad experiencing that, you know, because yeah, yeah, obviously the graph scene was pre that, pretty much. Yeah, you know but yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's all, it was all connected. Yeah. So when it came out. It was phenomenal. Mm. And then when Wildstyle came out, that just blew everything out of the water, man. <laughs> Again, more like Googling that. for you, yeah? Don't yeah, no, be sleeping on that Google. 1982 it's, film, Wildstyle. Yeah, huge. I think we got up here. You actually, got the... Somewhere, uh, yeah, yeah, somewhere. Somewhere around here. Yeah. Up the top there. There, it there is, we go. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah. Yeah. Miss a beat. So basically, that, that is, it was all those experiences that, that just got me into that... Hit, it was electro back mm. then, pretty mm. much. Do you know what I mean? And those, those electro albums... Yeah, man. Electro one, my, my brother bought Egyptian one of my lover. brothers. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. He, he worked with Christopher Glove Taylor and Ice Team down on West Coast. <laughs> Egyptian lover, you know. Hits after hits after hits. And you know what? He had his, he had his own label. Yeah. He was doing his own thing. Inspiring shit. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? So back then, it was just being exposed to all that because it was exciting. And you were in a band as well, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We formed... Um, Hard noise at art college, but no, before that, oh, were, before were, you, were you? Yeah, I was. Uh, you got good move. <laughs> well, oh, well, we're going back now. I was in. A, I was in a breakdance crew called Future Beat Alliance, and uh, Grace McRae, big up your chest. You know what I mean? Come on. He uh, he he was in my crew, and a few others back then. Well, I was Michael's our crew. <laughs> But I, I couldn't pop for shit, man. So I, I, was, I was, you know, obviously I'd pop do my, a lung. I'd do my, yeah. <laughs> I'd do my little moves and all that. But I, I wasn't, I was never going to be in the crew. But I was the beat person. I supplied the music. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was my main focus. So I think it was sort of early DJing for me because I was, I was the supplier of beats. Can't so underestimate what, that, man, because it's so hard yeah. for people to actually understand that, to, you know, we're, you know, even as a younger me, mm. to know that somebody made beats, had the equipment. Well, do you know, I wouldn't even, it wasn't even making beats. I was doing pause button mixing back then. So, but I was the selector of music. So basically, if we had, if we'd go out to Tooting Broadway with our liner and a ghetto blaster mm. or Covent Garden, I would have the mixtapes oh. that, that we were dancing because everybody liked my selections. Mm. So that was my early DJ experience. Wow. You know I mean? And then, um, Around that time, my first ever DJ experience, I was 14 years old, and there's a club in uh, Mitcham called Conyers. It's like a youth club. Right. And we had a, 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 a battle against uh, Mike Anthony or Michael Ransani back then. He's in Rampage. Right, he set up Rampage with Richie P, right? Big up Rampage, so, so, you yeah, Big up Rampage, Mike Anthony, Richie P. Our you peoples, know, that's right. Family for yeah. life. So my crew was battling his crew. You know what I mean? I spoke to him about it recently. He must have found me, I think it was in Grenada or something, and him and Richard P rang me up and we were talking about the old days Mad. and all that. So my first DJ experience was playing, It was there was two decks, it was like a wooden a wooden box with the two turntables, and they weren't even Technics turntables. There was a mixer in the middle, and there was this guy that was running the whole thing, and he, he showed me how to mix one record to the other live at that battle. He was wicked, man. Wow. Yeah, that was my first DJ experience. Dude, and all DIY, mm. all just figuring it out, yeah. hearing and seeing what was on TV. I'd never seen two turntables before together until that event, that 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 that, that body popping battle. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure, uh, I don't know if Colin, Colin Williams was there, TNT, because well, his crew was in... You know, he had a crew in Tooting. My crew was Future Beat Alliance. So basically, there was people from different schools. We yeah. were formed yeah. crews and stuff. Do you know what I mean? So I think what blows people people's minds, and certainly mine, is the idea... Because it's a given now, isn't it? Like, yeah. you know, you hear a, a slash lead guitar riff, and, oh, yeah, that's guitar. But, you know, the fault lines, it has to start somewhere. It's, just, it's incredible to think that that 
you know, the, the, the casualness in which we say, oh, I'm a DJ now. <laughs> Do you well, know what it, I mean? Well, nowadays, this is the thing. You know, everyone's a DJ online. Yeah. And all you see is just people dancing around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not DJing, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the ethics of real DJing is lost. Yeah. Because everyone, everyone's, everyone thinks they can DJ. Mm. You know what I mean? When I look at DJ videos online, I, well, when I glance, there's a difference between look and glance. I pretty much glance because everyone's on the bandwagon. Mm. You know, people have probably had equipment for two years. Mm, and they're and, in. And, and now, oh, I'm, if a, that. I'm a DJ. Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, a, it's, a, it's an acquired skill. It is. It's an acquired skill. From selection to technical, technical ability. Everything. Yeah. Everything. You, you've got to appreciate the culture that you're playing, whether it's multiple genres that you're playing, whatever. But it's an acquired skill. Yeah. Selecting the right music. Engaging with the crowd, yeah, you know what I mean. Making it right, making it right, man. You know, and mm. and when I see a lot of them online, a lot of lot of wannabes. <laughs> come on, man. And they I, hold their hat to it. That's their thing, yeah, man. So I, where is the skill set? Like, raise it, raise it, yeah, raise it. Come on, man. You know, I, I went to a gig recently, right? Uh, Project Six Festival in Brockwell Park. I went there. You know, it's drum bass and all that. Lovely. Then it was myself, Bailey, and my mate Anthony. Big up Bailey, by the way. Bailey, you done know. Come on, B. <laughs> Come on, man. Family. For Come life. on. So I did that, and uh, we went to different venues. Went to Hoot and Annie. We went to uh, uh, Chip Shop in Brixton. DJ Shorty was playing at Chip nice. Shop in Brixton. Now, all these want, names, man. Big them all up. If you Come want on. to see a, a DJ doing it, go and see DJ Shorty, man. Mm -hmm. Mashed it up. Mm -hmm. Mashed it up. It's true. Do you know Facts. What I mean? so. Facts. Chip shop holds it down. Yeah, Chip yeah. Chip shop yeah, holds yeah. it down. Yeah. Big up, Mike. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> there are these places where things actually do happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not discrediting, you know, the intellect of people that are actually into the mm. into the thing. Because there are, there are places now that still hold crown to to that raw ethic of what yeah. of what the culture's about, isn't it? Let's talk hard noise. Let's mm. do it. Let's get into it because, look, in my humblest opinion, uh, it, you, it was like an imploding star, you know. You shot such a huge influence yeah. in in the scene, you know. People like the Prodigy, <coughs> Prodigy sampling your music. Mm. People like... Um, like uh, Demon Boys and... Um, the Ragga Twins with, with Sinai. Yeah, uh, Red Ninja, Big Up Bluey. Know. Like, uh, you know, Harry Shutter, Big Up Harry Shutter, you know. Um, the, the insights are real. And you set almost like a tone of almost like a... a, a, a almost like a, a, a precursor of a script that, that led on to such amazing, <laughs> amazing moments in music. Yeah, well, we came out at the right time mm. and we had the sound that we had was perfect for the, the the era and the time that we dropped our music because it was very competitive back then. Yeah. You know, so many good groups, you know, hip hop, rave dance, everything everything was just popping. And we're talking nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. That was the year, brother. Everything was popping. You know, the club scenes were just popping. Music was popping from all genres, not just hip-hop. I'm talking pop, house, dance, acid. Yeah. Uh, hip U house. UK everything. soul. Everything. UK was... soul, soul to soul and all that. Everything was on a high level. Yeah. Everything was on a high level, dude. Yeah. So we had to compete with that level. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we didn't really think about it because it wasn't really a competition for us. We wanted to make something different. Mm. We didn't want to sound American. Mm in terms of the music we made, you know, we we just wanted, you know, our experiences of being in England, mm. you know what I'm saying? So, and everybody, we all had a similar thought process with our life experiences from being at home to experiences on the road, mm. on the street, you know what I mean? Racism and, and, mm. and big, big, well, brace and bigotry. Everything, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it, it's, it was, we all had similar experiences, etc. And it's not only that sort of negative stuff, but it, it, it was the politics that was going on mm. as well, do you know what I mean? Within England. Creates the aggression that you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, perfect yeah, 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 storm. Yeah, 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 yeah. The politics, what you see on TV and, and you know, you, you see 
certain chances weren't given to certain races in on TV, acting and all the rest mm. of it. If you look at uh, pop music, Top of the Pops and all the rest of it. Oh, yeah. Or if you listen to mainstream radio shows, they ain't going to play black no, stuff, dude. No. I had this conversation with Tipper Irie, actually. Shit, Tipper, you know, he, he, <coughs> legend. Mm. And it, even now, still does not get the plays he deserves. No. Number one hits. He did a track with uh, Black Eyed Peas, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. But I killed it. Killed it. But the, that's what it was about over here. So we paid attention to that, yeah. you know? And that, amongst many things, enabled us to collectively get our minds together and, and just come with some seriously hard music. It was seriously hard you know? music. And, and going back to that, Brickcore. Like, dude, like, even now when I listen to it, I'm like, man, what happened to that genre? Well, you know, as, 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 as everything's in life, everything in life's temporarily and all that, but, you know, that, that, in case people don't know, that, that term was coined by Germans that had an appreciation for hardcore underground UK hip-hop. Yeah, and people that were coming over at the time were, were the <laughs> likes of Blade, Killer mm -hmm. Instinct, Gunshot, mm -hmm. and that, like you say, it spawned this idea of something that... I guess maybe Grime picked up on with the addition of a, the, the new label. Yeah, yeah. See, we we had we were doing our thing at our generation, and obviously the Grime artists are of a different generation, so they're they're sort of doing their thing. But it, it, but it's all connected. It's all it's all correlates. Yeah, you know whether it's the it's eighties or the noughties. It's yeah. all connected. It's all connected. You know, you know, w would Grime have come about if we didn't do our thing? You know, w would would uh, would would rave music and drum and bass be where it's at if, if we didn't do our thing because everything there's six degrees of separation with mm. everything and I'm not saying that we are responsible for the progression and, and how uh, 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 music is like now mm. how it's mm. evolved but we played a part big time we, and it's nice to have to get that reckon uh, that that uh, um, that honour yeah. from the likes of Bailey from the likes of Groove Fabio all them man there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, all, Prodigy. All pay homage, yeah. Prodigy as well. Do you know what I mean? You know, Ragga Twins, all that, you know, they they, they were all into our shit, man. Mm. And they paid homage to them thing there with their music. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's, the, we were just art students, dude. You know, hard was art students, mate. We were all at art college and we just put a crew together because, you know, we we all I met Gemini, God rest his soul. Rest in peace, yes. Um I met Gemini in eighty six and then TLP one, rest his soul. Yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace, my brother. He joined the following year with DJ Sun and mm. it was just crazy how yeah. we all kind of connected in the canteen. Yeah. You know, headphones on, we all had the, the we looked the part. You remember we talked about in the pub earlier, we talked about the fashion that yeah. he was inspired by and all that. You know, you, you, you had to, if you're into hip hop, you got to look hip hop, man. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Especially where you come from, mom come from, you know. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> the only hip hopper in the village, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> well, you know, but that was that was the culture then, sort of thing. So, what I'm trying to say is, you could see who was into what by the way they dressed. Mm. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's got to be like, it's obviously a different world now, but back then, it was uh, it was just exciting. It was really, really mm. exciting. The 80s was a exciting era. For, for music, lovely. I feel it's it's interesting that mm. time with uh, hard noise because, as mentioned, there was gunshot, and through, I mean, it's all interconnected. Sun and noise, you guys, Cool Rock. It's almost like it's like the old school way of how you actually uh, create a scene. All of a sudden, these different. Uh, acts and collectives come together, but kind of off the same, almost the same fault line. Yeah, it's, it's weird because when you think of, um, for instance, you mentioned Son of Noise, etc. they were, all the members of Son of Noise were in other groups. Yeah. You know, DJ Renegade was with Blade. Yep, Big Up Renegade, yeah. You know, um, the, the two members from uh, Adam and Jason, they yeah. were in Hard Noise, yeah. two DJs, produ slash producers, and q was in Gunshot. Yeah. So when... Those groups, or, you know, uh, I, I I don't know the reasons why Blade and, and Renegade split up. I don't know the reasons there. Mm -hmm. I don't know the reasons why Q left Son of Noise. Big up Blade sorry, as well. Sorry, Big left, up Blade. left um, Gunshot yep. and all the rest of it. But, you know, Son of Noise were formed from other crews. Yeah. So, you know, with that, 
you know, because Madder Madder was in Madder was in Hard Noise, yeah, right? And yeah. then moved, it. yeah. That so was so was so DJ right. Sun. So yeah, they're brothers. So they yeah. they they formed Son of Noise, yeah. and then Q joined, and um, Renegade joined. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. they're, they're a collaboration of artists from other bands. So cool. You know what I mean? But but it it just shows that you know people can still just because your crew split up, it doesn't mean you got to give up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's right. You know you can still do your thing. Mm. And all the rest of it, you know what I mean. But, but um, these are like the these became the figureheads of the Bergen in UK hip hop scene of its time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's it, you, when you're making at the time, you 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 don't think of the impact that you're gonna have mm. because I think nowadays a lot of people make music to go viral, mm. and I think that's why a lot of current stuff shit <laughs> because the passion's not there. Yeah, it's not there. It's not there, dude. No. I've been around for years, do you know what I mean? And I'm, you know, when I listen to a lot of stuff, it's like, really? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, didn't your friends tell you that that track's shit? Why have you uploaded it? It's yeah, like, yeah. who are you playing that to? Yeah, yeah. Who's, what, is, has your crew given you the green light? Yeah, that's really good. Upload it and all that. Come on, mate. They go Standards, straight from, man. from demo to release rather yeah, than man, the it's incubation. Like the, the passion and, and because it's so easy now. Mm. Back then when we was doing stuff, right? If, if you got airplay... Mm. You made it. Mm. You mm. fucking made mm. it, dude. Mm. If you got your shit played on the way, that was a big thing, man. Public, pff, yeah, out. man. Like, oh shit, West was playing that thing. Max and Dave's playing that thing. Two Seven Lines playing that music and all the, you know, all the, all the mm. Mike Allen, mm. John Peel. Mm. If you get your shit on those stations, dude, you're doing something right. Yeah, hundred percent. Because they weren't gonna play shit stuff. You were also you know? some of the early proprietors of actually using the UK accent, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. And do you know what? Do you know what? I, let, I'm glad that you brought that up, you know, because I've seen so many podcasts where the younger generation seem to have a problem with rappers rapping with uh, an accent. So what? It was the times. Mm. Hip-hop was finding its feet. Everybody was blending in, trying to do their... It was in the US accent, so they were using the US accent. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, the, the yeah, US yeah, accent. Yeah, got you. And the thing is, nowadays, I see a lot of podcasts, people are writing it off. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, blah, 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 was the first to use a UK accent. Why is that Why is that a subject? Why is it a conversation? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, and the thing is, the history's wrong. Even with these sort of, you know, these people that think they know hip-hop mm. and think they know the history, the facts are wrong. Blah, mm. blah, blah, was the first to use a UK accent in a track. Really listen to something that, that, something that came out in 1983 and all the rest of yeah. it, you know what I mean? Because their, their knowledge is wrong. They don't know. Mm. And they're, writing history to the young uns because they might have loads of people on their channels or whatever and and they're saying this that and the other and, and it's all wrong yeah, yeah yeah it's all wrong because they haven't done their homework too. yeah that's right and the thing is well i'll say this as well during that time when the majority of uk rappers were rapping in american accents that was a sign of the times, dude. Yeah, it was. Because the artists now, they were saying, well, I wouldn't have used my ex. How do you know? You wasn't there. Mm. You were still in your dad's balls. You wasn't even conceived. So yeah. how the fuck would you know what you would have been doing in the, at that time? <laughs> That's real talk, bro. Yeah, it's true. I'm the slayer. I'll tell it like it is, dude. <laughs> come on now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> talk that shit on the podcast. Yeah, come on, man. You know what I mean? So who are they to, who are they to, to criticise? Yeah. Oh, that! Oh, they used the UK accent. Blah blah blah. You wasn't even there. Nah. You don't know what you was. You'd be doing at that time. Yeah. You wasn't even there. Don't diss. Do not diss rappers from England that were using American accents. You wasn't there. Cookie Crew did that shit. They made it big. Funky DL still doing that thing. Funky that still DL, sounds great. Moni Love and yeah. all that. You know what I mean, right? Because the UK scene was finding its feet. Yeah. Maybe at that time. It wasn't ready for the UK mm. accent thing because everything evolves. Man, they were so not ready. Come they on. were so not ready. But the thing is, the thing is, it's not a bad thing. No. Nah. It's not a bad thing, mate. You know what I mean? Because remember, right? It's whatever people are doing now is is bounced off of what people were doing previously. Mm. So you cannot write off. You cannot write off artists that were rapping with American accents, and you know a lot of youngsters now. Oh, but they were they were using American accents. No, man, I'm not. No, no, no. Who the fuck are you to decide what's good and what wasn't? Especially when you wasn't there at the time. Mm. You get what I'm mm. saying, brother? Can't write that off, man. No, because there was so much talent. Yeah. Back then, are they going to criticize 
Demon D from the Demon Boys for rapping with a UK accent and a Jamaican accent. Let's let's hear that discussion. Oh. Are they gonna criticize <laughs> are they gonna criticize Aswad for singing in a Jamaican accent when they're with their song, with their reggae yeah, songs? Yeah. It's always hip hop that's yeah. attacking hip hop. No other genre's doing that. What is that about? Ego. Ego, isn't it? Ego. Yeah. I think that's what it's about, ego. Because no other genre's doing that. It's just hip hop. Attacking hip hop. Yeah. Oh, but they they use their English. They use their American accents. They should have used, rap, rapped in English. When that person wasn't even there, understands nothing. Doesn't understand the mm. dynamics and the culture. Of its hasn't time. researched it. Hasn't yeah. spoken to anybody that was there at the time. But they they watch a video. Oh oh, they're rapping in an American accent. Learn the culture. Yeah. Learn learn the energies. What it was like back then mm. to understand what was going on mm. and don't write people off. Just because they were rapping in American accents back then, you, what you're going to write them out of history? Yeah, because they weren't doing that. What's all that about? You get what I'm saying? I know exactly what yeah, you're saying, man. I'm I glad you pulled it up, yeah. you know, because I've always wanted to say <laughs> something about that, man. Speaking the truth, that yeah, yeah, man. And and moreover, I feel like a lot of people going back to time sensitivity mm. and how how much people just want a ready cooked meal straight away, you know, <laughs> ready cooked meal. junk food. You know, but it's a process, yeah. and like when you look at, it, I would argue, up until grime, there was there was a real in DNA of where people got influenced. You know, perhaps, perhaps, um, mm. you know, speaking to Flo Dan, you know, he'll say, you know, it it was America, it was you know the shiny suit era. You know, we just wanted to replicate that in in garage, and then mm. it transferred into yeah. grime. You know. Th- the the influences that come into play, it takes a time. Of course it does. Doesn't it? Of course it does. Everything's connected, man. You know, uh, and, and like, you, like you say, you know, you, you, you'd have... Uh, look, when you think about when you think about Soul to Soul and what music they were coming with, the beats and all wow. that, what you think, they weren't listening to hip-hop. Oh, you don't think they were the, listening to SOS band? Yeah, li- listen to London <laughs> Beats, that white label that they put out. Do yeah. you know what I mean? That was Jazzy B. I think Trevor Nelson has something to do with that as well. Yeah, yeah. Big up Trevor Nelson. Yeah, come on, man. Like you know, all, all those white labels that yeah. came out, that, that they press up white labels of, of mixes, mm. using James Brown, use, using all sorts of... Even the Fun Boy 3 was in one of those mixes. Mm. And there, was a, there was a rare groove track that Fun Boy 3 put out. I can't remember what it... Well, it wasn't a rare groove track. It was, it, it, it was labelled as a rare groove. Mm. But Fun Boy 3 being played in, in like, a, a black club, dude. Yo, that is inc- but that track was fire, but that was used... That whole band, one, that whole three... It's yeah, crazy. Man. Crazy. You know, it, so, so back then it was it was about you got to have the ear and the, and, and appreciation. Inventing, for, inventing as yeah, well. Yeah, you, because you had to you had to study music back mm. then. Back then, it, you know, to make a track, you you pretty much had to have a good ear for uh, what was around you at the time or and beyond. So, for instance, it, it was it was like the break era. Mm. Yeah. You know the breakbeat era. <laughs> if you're gonna make a tune, what breaks are you gonna use? And all that? you had you had to know, you had to know sounds. You had to know you had to appreciate other genres of music mm. because breaks came from everywhere. It came from rock. It came from pop. It mm. came from everywhere, mm. right? And that that's so that era. Even the kick and the snare. If you're if you're making a beat, mm. where's that kick from? That snare and all the rest of it. Mm. Nowadays, obviously, everything's on a drum machine that no one cares about where that snare's from. No. Or, or, or you know, so what I'm saying is that the ears aren't tuned today because they're spoiled with the technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's why a lot of today's music is suffering. Yeah. Because it hasn't got that uniqueness. Well, of, it becomes you know, a soundtrack to a video. It it's, 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 yeah. it's all clones. It's just cloned. Everyone, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying everyone has the same. There's some love digs and lovely, fantastic talent out there. Yeah, yeah for Production, real. Production, singers, rappers, whatever. But to me, a lot, the majority of it, especially people with the, the loudest voices, and you listen to their stuff, yeah. it's not exciting, too. Yeah, and I think that the 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 theme of this conversation is create your lane, make your own sound, and and figure just things be out. Yourself, just be yourself. Yeah. You haven't got. To, you can be inspired by people, but where is the uniqueness mm. of, of of what you're doing? Do you know what I mean? When Hijack came about, they had a unique sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. had a unique, unique sound. sound. Demon Boys, London Posse, 
gunshot. Well, let's go massive attack Bjork. All that. All that. Like, all that. Just uniqueness, complete and utter. What the Look at the fuck tricky, is this? trip hop stuff back yeah. then. Yeah. You know, they all had a unique sound. Yeah. Incredible you, you, soul times. To soul had a unique yeah. sound. Yeah. Who's got a unique sound today, dude? Yeah, yeah. Not many, mate. Nah. You know, because it's all you know, it's all fast paced. I've got this equipment, bish bash bombed, beat sound really samey, mm. nothing standing out. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, like I, 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 well, I'm not gonna even mention names or nothing like that. But there's one or two tracks that I still play today that came out six, seven years ago because mm. they had a unique sound mm. and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? Uniqueness. And, and you know. If you, it's just a madness today. Mm. We've, we've there's some good shit out there. Don't there's get some, me wrong, but yeah, you know what, absolutely. man? A lot of it's bollocks, man. Yeah, you know. I, mean, I, I had uh, uh, Rich No Limits uh, creating, the, you know, the Johnny Cash sub low sound. Johnny Cash, you know, wow. wow. Now, when you talk about thinking on your feet, yeah, coming yeah, up yeah. with something I'm else. I'm a huge fan of Johnny Cash as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole yeah. Black Ops, it's mm. crazy. Um, peak, all right, peak. Hard noise yeah. for you. Uh-huh. What at, at that point where bang lift off? How was that for you at the time? Because yeah, again, seminal. Tell, tell me, <laughs> tell me how that went down for you. <laughs> well, you know the thing is that we didn't do much. You know, well, when I say we didn't do much, we we didn't last long as a crew. But when we did, um, when we did our tracks, we just did what we wanted to do. We didn't know that they were going to be huge mm. but we knew the sound was different mm. it was all about getting that sound right mm. do you know what I mean and that we collectively liked and it didn't you play our work which doesn't sound like someone that's had it might, might it might have did that, that have a, did, did that ever worry you from a no, play not at all. point of view because it was expression mm-hmm. it was, you know you, you've got an artist an artist is going to paint the canvas and express themselves. Mm. So remember, we're from art college. We, we, we have that mindset mm. about expression. So we, we applied that to music. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. That creativeness to to music. I mean, Mada, Mada wasn't at art college. Everybody else was apart from Mada and, and Nice D. Rest, rest, rest in peace, Nice D. Mm. You know rest what I mean? Mada was a, a student. He was studying electronics and stuff. But everyone else in the crew, we were all... Art artists mm. like you know like um, graphic artists. So uh, so music wasn't your first uh, uh, entry into the arts. It was it was other things. And because that because what that does is it allows your your head to think more freer. You're not mm. you're not in the, immersed in it, trying to figure out what what might work. You're seeing from the outside, thinking, oh well, we'll, we'll just do this. You do, think do, do, out of the box mm. with, with with art. Art's about expression, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So. Mm. Obviously, you've got art in multiple genres. You know, if you think of art, then you've got artists mm. of a given sk- trade. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You're an artist of podcasts. Yeah. And and thank you. Graffiti and you know what I mean. Yeah. So it, it, it's like a subgenre, isn't it? You know, you, you could be an artist at anything, but with us, we were creatives and we applied that thought process without conversation. It was just a meeting of the minds that that. We were put together for a reason, I think, yeah. from a greater being. I yeah. think we, we we were put together, we made an impact, then we dispersed. Yeah. But that impact is still impactful Yeah. 30 years later. The vibrations of... It's crazy. Do you ever... Hmm, it's interesting you say that because mm. there are some people that, you know, are ahead of the curve mm. and are destined to implode. Um, do you accept that? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, what? it's 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 a difficult one because every, every mind's different. Everyone's got their own minds. Everyone's got their own agendas, et cetera, et cetera. Do you know what I mean? And nobody can predict. I can't predict where music's going to be in two, three years' time. Mm. If I could, I'd, I'd be a millionaire. Mm, I'd be mm, making mm, that music. Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? So, look, the world's fast-paced, right? People are dying younger. Mm. You know, and everything's changing rapidly. We've got the birth of, well, not birth, but the, the sudden expansion of AI. Mm. And that's affected mindsets as well. Mm. That's the world's a different place with that. People are out of work because of it. Mm. People will be out of work because of it. 
everything's just moving super, super fast. So I think with that, and then if you if you think about that concept with the way music's going and uh, everybody's promoting themselves mm. online and everything, it's, 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 it's just a, 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 a frenzied world. Do you think it forces people to think creatively? Because AI, like you say, is, you know, this the burgeoning beast that's, you know, the, the invisible... It depends on the individual, do you know what I mean? Because obviously we've got AI, it's how you use it, it's how you, what you want out of it mm. and all the rest of it, do you know what I mean? You know, some people are terrified of it, some people think it's wrong and, you know, I, I can't have a, a, a sort of, I can't make a fundamental uh, a distinction mm. on any of that because of the, the sort of creative stuff that I do. Um, but it, the stuff that I do isn't based on AI or anything like that. Mm. But, you know, it... It has its advantages if you're working on something, and y y you 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 need uh, a logo or something. Yeah, really no, quick. not even logo, not even logo. If you're working on something complex, in fact, I wouldn't use AI to create a logo. I'll, I'll create that myself. You know what I mean? Now that you have logo makers and stuff like mm. that, but it's always pe people. I th I think the technology, the way it's gone, is making people lazy. Mm. Like, oh, I can do that. You know, look at I look at promo videos that people do online. And stuff like that. You could hire someone to do it, or you could do get it on and do it yourself yeah. because of the apps. But when you look at them, I'm from a creative background, mm. and the person or per persons, people, plural, or whatever, they've uploaded what they think is great, but it might suit what they're doing. It might suit their audience. That and looks yeah. like shit, dude. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. just every every you know every the computers are taking over, too. Mm. You know, they're they're they're, they're taking over. Um, pretty much everything that we do. But do you think like the adaptation you know? of computers and technology for a, a time of hard noise? Mm. I mean, this was like a really early inception of perhaps what's going on now. Do you mm. think, because the, the youthful wisdom of coming up with such an iconic name and uh, working in what you perceive as being technology from the US and bringing it back, I mean, you had to, you had to harness any technology you could. Yeah. I think, you know, back the, back then, the, you know, the music equipment was different and you had to, you had to go to an actual recording studio and pay money to record your songs mm. if you wanted the dynamics right. And then there's a lot of people that did go to recording studios and record their songs, but the dynamics weren't right in their music. Mm. The sonic levels were But wrong. that's where the imagination comes in. That's where the creativeness comes in mm. because it's all about that sound. Untitled bangs. It you know. bangs. <laughs> well, bangs. That's so kind of you, dude. Like... How do you even come up with a, you know, what frequencies do you leave out and in? And well, I've got, I've, got give, I've got to give a shout out to uh, Master Mix because Master Mix, he worked with Cookie Crew, Dazzle Producer, right? He was the one that actually constructed the beat for us and then and then we, we took that beat to the studio and, and added samples and mm. stuff. And, and, you know, Master Mix doesn't really get his props out there. When people think of hard noise, they just think of us and all that. Got to give Master Mix his props. Big up Master Richard, Mix. Richard, up, big up. Thank you for everything you've done for mm. us. So, you know, um, so it, it was his creative mind that, uh, you know, he, he was given the, 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 the break, the Apache break, and mm. he twisted it. He twisted it hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then we took that and niced it up. Yeah. It was nice anyway, but we nice it up. In let's the talk studio. about let's let's also talk about the MCs because Dude, Jesus, man, yo. you guys were just just attack, 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 yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, uh, you know, it's funny, you know, because I miss my friends, you know, Gemini and DJ, uh, TLP One. Gemini's style was more what they call grime now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Some people have regarded him as a sort of early hidden. Grime artist, yeah, because mm. of his style, his aggressive style. Well, not, not hidden grime artist, but you know what I'm trying to say is that he's. Some people have regarded him as as setting the foundations mm. for that style. Mm. That's what some people have said. I'm not giving Gemini credit for that. I'm just saying that what I'm trying to say is he was very original. Yeah, grime is very original music. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So. You know, Gemini style and TLP one, they both had completely different styles, but were inspired by each other and mm. we were all friends. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? So, you know, when you when you listen to Gemini rap, 
he, he he's not using an American accent. Mm. Till people one, you know, he's got his own style. Do you know what I mean? You have a slight American twang with with his style of mm. rapping. You know what I mean? But he pretty much raps how he talked. Not saying he talked American and all that. So our rappers were very original. Mm. And I think that's what made the hard noise tracks stick out as well. As, 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 on top of the, the the hardcore production, but the rappers blended with each track. So mm. Gemini and TLP1 were on Untitled together. Mm-hmm. And then TLP1 rapped on, then they had the solo tracks, Mice in the Presence and Serve Teeth and Murder. Mm-hmm. And the, the production, <laughs> as well as those crazy names. I mean, yeah. who'd name a track served here with murder? <laughs> <Fucking> <laughs> <hell>. <laughs> That's Gemini, man, you know what I mean? And, he, and that was, that, 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 he told me once, I asked him, this was at around the time when he had the cancer and stuff, I was getting a lot of information out of him and stuff like that. And he mm. said to me, I said, what made you come up with that, that name, Serve Teeth and Murder? Because I remember at the time, you know, he said, I want, at the time we, we put on, uh, Serve Teeth together, he said, I want, I, want, I want it to be called Serve Teeth and Murder. We didn't, we didn't even ask why at the time. It's only like years later that I said to him, <laughs> what, what made you come up with that name? And he said, I was reading a book about Mary Ann Cotton as Britain's first serial killer. And, and she used to poison her husbands and boyfriends with tea. With the tea? And all that, you know, <laughs> So, you know. Yo, check <laughs> so, the insights in a man. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Watch your tea, people. Do you know what that, I mean? That, that crazy mindset. Wow. That crazy mindset. So all that came out in the music, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so you know, they all had their own stance. Then the, the three DJs, must, uh, Gemini, Sun, myself, we had our stance with, with the DJing. Mm. And everything came together. Everything crazy. came together, dude. You know what I mean? When we and, talk about the influences of them. Um, yeah. Of uh, grime and I mean it's it's kind of only coming to light now. I mean Bionic London Posse, well, wow. big up Rodney P. Um, and you know just the, I've seen a couple of interviews recently, one with Wiley, where he's like, you know, you know, we all don't want to admit it, but you know, grime is a uh, is a descendant of hip hop. Of course it is. And then of course I, it is. I think I saw a, a Skepta uh, Nardwa um, meet up where Nardwa was pulling out records and he pulled out MC Duke. And Skepta was just like, right, we ain't talking about that UK was rap. Recent, I saw yeah, that was recent, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like on the eve of his passing as well. Rest yeah. in peace, MC Duke. Um, for sh- for sure. And I think by default, in the big cycle of things, mm. age, wisdom, people go back to source. They they kind of understand themselves enough and relate to what you're talking about here. Where it's like, well, actually, it was a small island, mm. UK and. To, to 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 defer influence is fucking ridiculous. Absolutely, absolutely. They, they, and even like you 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 you'd think sort of more known DJs would would appreciate them things there as well because yeah. you know I think you know a lot of times I go to hip hop gigs like really big events yeah. and all the rest of it. You don't hear UK stuff. No. And and you don't hear the UK stuff that popped. Yeah. At the time. But when you talk to SS or DJ Hype, they're like, yeah, you, UK hip hop. Yeah, well, DJ Hype, he, he, he had a track on Musical Live Records, believe it or not. Did you know that? No, what? Yeah, bro, the drum and bass DJ Hype, Yo. he had a track on, I think it was the Hardest Hell Volume 3. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I know my history, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no one can test my history. Oh, you want to do a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he had, a, he had a, a track, I can't remember the name of it, but it's on either Hardest Hell 3 or 4. Wow. Yeah, he had a hip hop track out, DJ Hype. Can't deny the fault lines. Come on, mate. Can't deny there, the fault there's lines. There's six degrees of separation with everything. Do you mm. know what I mean? And, you know, I go to a lot of drum and bass gigs and all the rest of it. I love the music. I love to so I go to, you know, obviously, I go to reggae gigs. I go to hip hop and all that. You know what I mean? Mm. But, you know, for me, with the drum, the drum and bass is a lot of expression there. Mm-hmm. A lot of expression, mate. What keeps you like hungry? That. What keeps you hungry for music like that? I think um, it's. A who you who you who you're hanging with, mm. you know, because you know it, it it's uh it it's back then you know back then you y- you'd meet friends through music right mm. and stuff like that do you know what I mean but I think what keeps me going is it's just life you know because music's therapy mm. and no matter what you go through in life you could go through ups and downs and all the rest of it there's always a track that can help lift you mm. whether it's uh. It could be a soul track. It could be, I don't know. Punk, it, anything. It, it, it could even be, a, yeah, a punk track. 
a Jimi Hendrix track, yeah. you know, Jimi Hendrix experience track and all the rest of it. You know, it depends what you're going through. So our music is regarded as uh, rebellious. And I'm not upset with that. Yeah. I'm not upset with that. It's not angry music, but it's rebellious music. If you're having a hard time, you're thinking about that boss at work, he's a cunt. Oh, yeah. You're like, you're going to play Untitled and, and say, yeah, you're a cunt. And all that. You're not a very, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? But you also had the cuts yeah. as well on the choruses, mm. which for me was like, you know, it's it's bringing that whole energy together, like no fucks given. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, it was it was what you're gonna scratch as well, yeah. and how you're gonna do it, and that was just as important as the rapping. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? So that element, which is, I I I've got to say, it's a shame that music's gone like, especially hip hop where the majority of tracks have no scratching on. They've abandoned the scratch DJ. And I think that's a shame. I mm. really do. I'm not saying it's got to be on every track, but that, you know, the DJ was a, a very important element of, of the creation of, of hip-hop. And mm. now when I hear a lot of tracks, everyone's uploading their hip-hop tracks online, the videos, no scratching. Yeah. No scratching, mate. Do you know what I mean? Not even one. You, you, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You, you, you can't... You can't abandon the scratch DJ, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He started the whole damn thing. He was a DJ that created hip hop in the first place. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then years later, decades later, they want to put that person in the background mm. and then do a track and all that. And, and there's no, not even a little scratching on, on, on a kick drum. Yeah. You don't hear nothing, mate. It's ignorance, isn't it? Yeah, man. It's, that's, that's, I don't subscribe to that. I'm not saying that all, all tracks that don't have scratching is, is, is shit or nothing like that. But I think today's artists can do better. Yeah, they can do better. Respect the scratch, DJ, man. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Real talk. You know, respect the, like you say, with our DJs, you look at the the, the, the levels and, and the advancement of Undercover and Supreme and Hijack and what they yeah. were doing. You talk to Cuba and, and all, the, all them... Guys out there yeah. that were influenced by what was going on in England. Scratch perverts, pro yeah, cuts, all, all, Everybody, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Everybody, Babu, yeah. all, all them guys were influenced by what was going on in England. Yeah. And yet England ain't recognising or acknowledging their own talents. Yeah. <laughs> they just write you off. It's almost like an incubation place for yeah. America to remar re remarket it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we need to hold it our own. They, they, they just, you know, yeah. they just write you off. Oh, you didn't rap in a blah, blah, blah accent and all that. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. There's so much to... Um, Teach the young with with that generation mm. or my generation of artists and groups that were around at the time. There's so much to teach them. Don't watch the accent thing. Watch things that you're missing mm. because their their brains are just set with the UK accent thing. Mm. No one's talking about the scratching. No one's talking about the lyrics yeah. of, of of tracks. You know what people are saying. The messages they were putting out and all the rest of it, right? No one's talking about the levels of production. It's just today's today's podcast that I see, everyone's criticising the, uh, oh, they didn't rap with uh, 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 UK mm. accents. Talk about every, talk mm. about other stuff. Talk about the culture and, and, and you know, how, how, it, how it came about or, or, or how it evolves into, to, to what we were doing in the 80s. Because it all came from somewhere. But no. you know, do you know how hard it is though mm. to get people like yourself of a particular era to actually come forward and talk? I wouldn't know how hard it is. I, I, it's yeah. hard. It's, <laughs> it's not easy. Oh really? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then you know you think about sorry to interject right there, but with my experiences that we're talking about, you know, I, as I said, I grew up pretty much in that um, reggae era mm. when I was young, mm. and obviously rock steady, your ska rock steady, and all mm. that. Rocksteady came off Scar and Reggae came off Rocksteady. Mm. Everything's connected. First mm. Reggae track's probably 1970. 70, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh. So, But everything's connected. And, mm. and the thing is, if you look at the Reggae artists, they were listening to a lot of country and Western. Yeah, that's they right. They were listening to what they could, and, and as well as the Ray Charles and all that, they, they were listening to what they could get, what they could tune into, the yes. radios. Yes. No one talks about that. No. No one talks about that. You know, you know what I mean? These a lot of the young guys that do podcasts, they they just go back to 1990. Yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. want to talk about nothing beyond that. Expand your brain, man. Because they don't understand that they had to get the radio, yeah, man. whatever was being they played. They don't talk about that deep history because yeah. everything's connected. Yeah. 
even when Amy Winehouse said it in an interview, how 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 she doesn't know where this country would be without black music, black culture. Yeah. she said that in an interview that I that I found categorically recently. Yeah, she paid homage. These youngsters need to do that. They need yeah. to they need to understand. Know your fucking history. Yeah, know your fucking history before you start shutting off your mouth on your podcast, chatting shit mm. about earlier generations of, of artists know your fucking history mate know mm. your onions <laughs> standards if there's only one podcast you need to come to with this information this kind of intel um, fuck bro like god I wish we had more fucking time to talk but Jesus Christ I mean what an amazing well, set of fucking intel right here indeed just want to say another thing as well these t-shirts get their t-shirts hard noise commemoration t-shirts uh, available through hardcorehoodies.co.uk we've got four premium designs Right, I'm wearing one of them in homage to Hard Noise Untitled. Mm. Paying big respect to my, my brothers that have passed away from my crew. Mm. These t-shirts are only available through hardcorehoodies.co.uk. Proper. Get involved. Proper. What's the future, brother? Dude, man, is the future bleak? I'm not going to think that it's bleak because if you think negative, negative things will happen, my brother. Mm. But in terms of the future of me and life or, or life as a whole... Do you know what? Life is what you make it, dude. And there will be ups and downs. You get knocked back. You've got to pick yourself up and keep jabbing. Mm -hmm. If I can learn motion graphics at the age of 50, right, from 30 years' experience <laughs> as, a, as a graphic designer, someone else can do the same thing. Real talk. And, and, and by the way, the graphics are serious. You know, I've worked, yeah. I've worked with Public Enemy. I've, I've done bits and pieces for O2 Academy. You know, it's and that's all self taught, you know mm. what I mean? Because you've got to have the will to want to do it. Don't be, don't get to a certain stage in your life and you think, I can't do this anymore, you know, blah, blah, blah. You, mm. you can still achieve mm. what you want to achieve. It's all about the mindset. You've got to have the will, the drive to want to do it. Because if, if you mm. get a knockback, don't be knocked back by the knockback. Mm. Yeah? Repurpose skill sets. Amen to that, brother. Yeah. Amen to that. And I'm a testament of that. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, I, I've been through my depression and, and all the rest of it, but I, I did something As we all it. have. As, yeah, as we, we all have, have yeah. We're all human. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. We've all had difficult times, but it's, it's what you do. You, you just got to think mm. and, and, and believe in yourself and follow your dreams, mate. Don't, don't let working nine to five destroy your life. Mm. There's more to life than... Working your ass off to cover that fucking those mortgage bills and all that. Mm. Enjoy life mm. because tomorrow's never promised, right? Real talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Ain't one hell of a Jerry Springer sign off right there. <laughs> Yo, thank you so, dude. Yo, hey Jay in the thank building. You. Thanks for having me. It was worth Such every fucking second, here, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. See, so now go and research R and D. Google that shit. Whatever you're using right now to flick around. Utilise it in the right way. Killer Killer Podcast, Ally like In Was Out of Fashion serves you right. AJ tells you so. Uh, sharing is caring. And remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, and you stay lucky, people. AJ? Big up. Peace. Peace. <laughs> is that good?